All right, hey, it's Only Play Wizards here, and I just got the Icons of the Realm, Walking Statue of Waterdeep, the Honorable Knight, quote unquote, miniature from WizKids, and uh, it is uh, bloody big, uh, as a lot of you guys have seen. Now, one of the questions I had about this was I wasn't sure how big it was. We got a, kind of an idea of like, you know, height and all this stuff, and compared to your standard uh, medium miniature. But I also want to understand how actually big it is. So if you look at the base on it, and um, it's a it is a, a seven uh, inch diameter base. So it is gargantuan under fifth edition rules. Uh, it's it's up there. Um, but real quick about the miniature, uh, it's great detail. It's big. It's heavy. Um, the one thing on this, I actually have to tell you that I really was surprised at, and I really love, is the clear base. Uh, miniatures with such a big base, especially when they're not eating up a lot of like the real estate of it. So he only has two feet versus like a dragon has like, you know, four feet on it and a low belly or something. You can actually see through it. And that makes it great for um, showing off the terrain if you have a cool mat. Um, if you're playing it on uh, trying to do some photo shoots with it, whatever. It lets you really uh, keep your terrain uh, uh, coming through. So, um, and also that's the beauty of this piece too. Is you, you know, uh, you can certainly use this as like the creature itself but also just as a piece of um uh, terrain this would this the clear base really helps on that uh, it comes in four pieces it is the main body the base uh the right hand and the left hand uh, they go on pretty easy they're per they slide right on in they're not posable at all uh he is what you get uh obviously one of the big things that people didn't notice initially was the uh, little bird's nest on top which is a lot of fun I certainly want to uh, make sure I get to use that. But I want to do, uh, my real question on this guy was, I want to do some size comparison. So I showed you a standard, uh, you know, medium-sized creature, little miniature by WizKids there. But this is looking at a large, so here's a, here's a nice troll. So he's pretty good size still, and I mean, this guy dwarves him. But I wanted to go more in depth, and uh, I have access, since I still, I, I have all the, uh, the gargantuan miniatures uh, that have ever been made by D&D um, &D and WizKids. Uh, I wanted to show those off in comparison. So the first one that ever came out was the uh, big old gargantuan black dragon. And we thought this guy was a monster. And looking at him now, he, he ain't much. Um, he gets dwarfed out pretty hard. The other thing that's interesting about this animated statue miniature too is that a lot of the lar these gargantuan miniatures they've done have largely been dragons um, or the Kraken or something like that. But they haven't done a lot of bipedal ones. Uh, the, the black dragon comes pretty close to being bipedal in terms of its pose, but it's not a classical bipedal creature. The only one they really ever did was the Orcus miniature, which you can see here. And once again, he is just, uh, the demon god of the undead is just dwarfed as well. Um, but those are a little older. Those are from uh, 3.5, kind of 4th edition era. But if we go to the contemporary era, um, and we look at, say, uh, Tiamat... Uh, you can still see this thing is, I mean, it just eats it. Uh, he's ready to crush Tiamat there with uh, so much of a stomp. But now the big question was this, and, and I emphasize the word big, was how does this guy compare, how does the animated statue compare to the Gargantuan Red Dragon? The Gargantuan Red Dragon is like the biggest miniature they ever made. When it came out, the word miniature was put in quotes a lot. But how does this guy compare to, to that thing? Well, I finally got my answer, and I was a little, I was a little surprised. Uh, there you go. There is your side-by-side -side comparison of the Icons of the Realm anime statue with the Gargantuan Red Dragon. The statue is not taller. Uh, the dragon has about three quarters of an inch on him. Uh, in addition, the base of the dragon is eight inches versus seven inches. Um, but aside from that, I mean, this is a hell of a matchup. Uh, both of these, though, was interesting enough. I, I, I don't have it handy right now, but I do have the, the Ship of the Falling Star. And the Ship of the Falling Star honestly, like, made the, the dragon seem small, too. So I really, um, uh, I'm really into this, actually. I'm really, I'm really eager for these pieces, uh, and to use them in some fashion, uh, in the future. But yeah, there's, there it is, the statue. Um, worst case scenario, the guy looks good on your shelf. You know, he, he's, he's great. Uh, he's very sturdily built. He isn't, he's not gonna fall over. Um, you can see he's got a great sheath, a lot of detail. Uh, one of my questions would be, uh, if I was running this in a game, is like, what the hell put those scratches in its shield? You know, what was the story behind that or its sheath? Because um, there's some cracks, but those are those are scratches. Uh, might have been might have been this guy over here. Uh, back's got some great detail. Um, the armor is certainly classically elaborate, very classical D and D type stuff. Uh, 
kind of gives you that feel. You can see the chainmail underneath. But he is not made of metal. He is stone. So they keep that through and through. And they have some nice little uh, weathering on it. Um, and I'm actually eager to see some people possibly repaint him. Uh, maybe do a little bit better stone work on him uh, than this, uh, the job they, they do at the factory. But uh, yeah, that's it. So there you go. Uh, Icons of the Realms um, Walking Statue of Waterdeep, the Honorable Knight, is out. And he is large, but not quite as big as this guy over here. But he's certainly uh, he's certainly command some respect from your players if you, if you put him out. So all right, thank you very much, guys. Later.